This is where I hope the symbolic language throughout this series has been making sense because we're now going to start bringing it all together as we head towards the conclusion. We've now explored license, which is the law of Satan, otherwise known as the law of the Lima. This system says that you can do whatever you want, you are your own god, you can make things up as you go along, there are no rules. We've also now explored legalism, which is the law of Pharisees, and this is the polar opposite of licentiousness because it burdens people with too many oppressive rules to regulate their behaviour. And then in the middle we have true liberty. This is the law of Christ. It's when people know good and evil through an objective moral law and it's when people are empowered to choose good over evil by the power of the Holy Spirit. In short, we don't want license because we'll become enslaved from within to our own sinful natures and we don't want legalism because we'll become enslaved from without to mountains of crushing laws and by proxy the organization that enforces them. On the left we have self-destruction and on the right we have tyranny. Only in Christ do we have true freedom. And if the sin language isn't quite working for you, then this one might explain it better. True freedom is always flanked by these two awful pits of legalism and license. C.S. Lewis wrote, The devil always sends errors into the world in pairs, pairs of opposites, and he always encourages us to spend a lot of time thinking which is the worse. You see why, of course. He relies on your extra dislike of one error to draw you gradually into the opposite one. But do not let us be fooled. We have to keep our eyes on the goal and go straight through between both errors. We have no other concern than that with either of them. Unfortunately, most don't listen to C.S. Lewis' warning on this, and the truth is that society tends to bounce back and forth between the two pits of legalism and license, always missing true freedom in the process. And over the next few parts, we're going to explore how this happens, not just in the church, not just within religion, but in society as a whole.